There are many problems in this world of ours. War, poverty, racism, slow walkers, the fact that cream eggs are getting smaller year on year and Capri's think we don't notice. But there's something that's been keeping hardcore petrol heads up for a while now. Turbocharging. The humble turbocharger has been around for a fair old while. Swiss engineer Alfred Bucci is credited with its invention, getting a patent for it in 1905. In 1918, one was fitted to a V12 Liberty aircraft engine to show that power loss from high altitude could be combated with forced induction. The humble turbo first appeared on cars in the 60s with the Chrysler Corvair Spider, and then a couple of weeks later in the Oldsmobile Jetfire as an option. Now, people liked it and the tech was popularised. As we all know, a little bit later, both Porsche and Saab kind of ran with the turbo thing and made it quite cool. The performance and efficiency gains were fantastic and essentially turbos were the best things ever. OK, the tech was flawed thanks to turbo lag, meaning many moments of nothing than a whole heap of boost. But with time and development, those problems went away. Turbo power made road cars fun and race cars savagely powerful. 1500 brake horsepower race engine? No problem. Slightly Larry 70s Porsche 911? All yours. Not only did they allow big engines to have enormous power, they also let small engines perform like larger engines. For example, a dinky tiny little engine with a turbocharger attached would get loads of MPG, but also not take a billion years to get to 62 miles an hour. As far as diesels go, well, Mercedes bolted one onto an oil burner in the 70s, and then, well, now it's pretty hard not to find a turbocharged diesel. Though that may soon change because of VW's Porky Pies, that's uh, pretty much killed it for most people. So when did turbos go from being universally good to being something of an annoyance? We all know manufacturers are under a squeeze for emissions to be as low and grass-friendly as possible. Turbo power allows that. About a decade ago, the idea of a turbocharged supercar or sports car was something of a novelty. But nowadays, you can't move for blown motors. They are absolutely everywhere. It used to be that a turbocharged model was a special thing. You know, the 911 Turbo was the 911 Turbo. Ferrari's California T, when it was new, was quite a thing for the Italian mark. It was exciting. It was a big development. Now, though, well, all of Aston Martin's future cars are going to be turbocharged. If you want a naturally aspirated motor, well, you have to look at Audi and Lamborghini and really, that's about it. In fact, if you want a naturally aspirated Porsche 911, you've got to look to the hardcore GTs. But why is it complained about? That, well, that's down to people who miss the good old days. And why then should the turbo tantrums come to an end? It's all down to nostalgia. People get wrapped up in the sound and the feel and the smell of old cars. For example, when I was a kid, I was absolutely in love with the Aston Martin DB5. The shape and the myth behind it made it genuinely exciting. And I'd hoped then that every other iteration, every future iteration of DB5 would be as close to that original as possible. So that when, if it came my turn to own one, well, it would feel the same as the old car and invoke the same emotions then as it would when I was a kid. The turbo, it is argued by many people, including myself on numerous occasions, nulls the noise and the soul of a car. Turbocharged engines don't rev as high as their naturally aspirated counterparts, and they don't tend to sound as good either, they're a little bit muted. It's not quite as awake, not quite as ferocious, not quite as alive as the naturally aspirated engine used to be. It's similar in a way to being given an extra cone on your ice cream. It's great that you get more, but cones are a bit rubbish. It's nice that you get more power, but the hour will pay off isn't worth it. I, as is my right, have changed my mind. You see, every now and then something so big with such wide implications comes along that you realise it's doing so for the greater good. Okay. That, my friends, is turbocharging fast cars. And in a way, it's kind of our fault. You see, every time a new Porsche 911 comes along, we expect it to be faster. But as you know, legislators want new cars to be more efficient too. Now, the power bit is comparatively easy. The efficiency bit, less so. Turbocharging solves that problem. The power is raised significantly, as is economy, essentially keeping our number lust happy and the government confident that we're doing enough to keep Mother Earth safe. The experiences you can have with a blown motor may not be as noisy as before, they may not be as visceral, but they're necessary to keep enjoying fast cars. We have to recycle nowadays, and we didn't in 1983. We don't complain about it because we just do things differently now. 
Similar thing. What was once celebrated is now causing ire for a very vocal few, and that's a shame because turbocharging is a thing, and it's not going away. In many ways, turbocharging is just better. It's something we all have to accept. It's the future, even if it's going to be a slightly quieter one.